Here is the Arilic A30 Plus wireless streaming amplifier. This was sent to me by the manufacturer for free. That's why I'm marking this video as an advertisement. However, in this review, I am going to state my honest and unbiased opinions. So, what is this? Well, it's a tiny little hi-fi stereo amplifier that puts out two times 35 watts into 4 ohm speakers or two times 18 watts into 8 ohm speakers. It has Bluetooth 5.0 for streaming music of your mobile devices. It has a USB digital to analog converter to connect to your computer. It has a traditional analog line input, but the main feature is the network connectivity via Ethernet or Wi-Fi. You can stream music from your phone, from a network share, such as your computer or a network attached storage. You can stream music from online streaming services, such as Spotify, Amazon Music, and all kinds of different internet radio stations. The device supports AirPlay, DLNA, UPnP, Spotify Connect, and QPlay protocols. And the system is mainly controlled by the manufacturer's Four Stream app or other AirPlay or DLNA apps. Arilic offers a wide range of products, including bare boards for DIY projects. All these when connected to the same network, can be combined and synchronized into a multi-room stereo system. Here is everything that comes in the box. Of course, the wireless streaming amplifier itself. Power brick, 18 volts, 4 amperes, and power cable. RCA to 3.5mm TRS adapter cable. The remote control, instruction manual, two screw-on antennas for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and a bit of an oddity, this green screw terminal is the speaker connector. The speaker wires are screwed into this terminal block using the screwdriver that is supplied along with the kit. Now, I found that to be a bit impractical, so what I have done is I've put in these DIN speaker jacks to connect and disconnect speakers more easily. Here is a closer look at the wireless streaming amplifier. It sits inside a nice, high-quality aluminium case. There is really nothing to see on the front. On the left side is a status LED. This changes color depending on which mode you're in, and it blinks during setup. And on the right side is the sensor for the remote control. Here is a look at the back of the unit. There is a lot more going on here. We have two antenna connectors for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. There is a little button which is confusingly labeled reset, but in reality it's a multifunction button. You short press it and the device turns on, and when you then short press it again, it switches the input mode. If you long press it, the device turns off. If you have the device turned on and you short press the button twice, it goes into the pairing mode for Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, and if you short press it three times, the device restores its factory settings. So only then it's an actual reset button. We have an Ethernet port for a wired network connection and a USB Type-A connector. This is for playing music off a USB thumb drive. Next along is a micro-USB connector. This is for connecting to a computer and for using the device as a USB digital-to-analog converter. 
Next along is the 3.5 millimeter analog audio input. There is the speaker output connector and the DC input connector. Here is the four stream app. This is used to control the wireless amplifier. And as you can see, it already appears in the device tab. And if I had several of these wireless streaming amplifiers, this would be a whole list of all the devices. So as you can see, this one is now highlighted. So I can go over into the browse tab and this is a list. First of all, we have all the music in the local network. Then we have all the online music services. And as you can see, there is a whole list of them that you can choose from. And down here is the source selector for Wi-Fi, line in, Bluetooth, or the USB digital to analog converter. So let's go back up into my music in the local network and we can access my network attached storage to play back some music. And the playback has started and if I go back into the device tab, as you can see, the wireless streaming amplifier is now playing. And down here, of course, I can control the volume. There is a settings menu and in here we find an equalizer for treble and bass. Now, if I had several of these streaming amplifiers, they would all appear in this menu as a list. And with this button, I would be able to synchronize them. So I could have several of these amplifiers playing back precisely the same music. Now, in case you have more than one of these amplifiers in one room, down here, you can also select which channel to play back. Left channel. Right channel. Stereo. So even within one room, you can get several of these wireless streaming amplifiers to work together. Now, I would like to also point out another thing that I really liked about this app, and that is how open and honest they are with permissions. When you install the app, it requests two permissions. One is for accessing local files, and that is, of course, for playing back music that is saved in the phone. That's right here in the Browse tab. The phone, obviously. The second permission that it requests is for GPS. And at first glance, that does not make any sense, but they explain it. The GPS permission somehow allows the app to communicate with the wireless streaming amplifier directly without going through the network. And this is used for the initial setup of the wireless streaming amplifier. The app communicates directly with the wireless streaming amplifier and you can then program in all of your network access details. And they are very open with you and they clearly tell you after this initial setup is complete, you can deactivate the GPS permission. So this is not one of these dubious apps that requests tons and tons of permissions and you have no idea what they are used for. If you want to have a more detailed playback screen, just tap on the device and there it is. This would display some album art if there was. And 
Down here, again, there is a volume control. I can do shuffle playback. I can repeat, go back, go forward, and of course, I can pause. There is also a third tab for settings, but as you can see, there is not much in there. Let's also take a quick look at the remote control. This is nice because once you have all your sources set up, this is enough to control the wireless streaming amplifier, so you don't have to always use the app if you don't want to. There is a power button. There is a button to turn the status LED on or off. There is a mute button. An input selector, USB, AUX, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. The optical input, of course, is not implemented on this model. There is a play-pause button, volume up and down, and skip tracks. There are tone controls, bass up and down, treble up and down, flat, and dynamic bass. And there are six presets, and these can be programmed to call up six specific playlists. Let's now take some time to listen to the Arillic A30 Plus wireless streaming amplifier. I have it connected to my trusty old Keith Coda speakers. Here we go! I can now use the remote control to control the amplifier. I can control the volume. Every command is confirmed by a beep tone. Let's also try the dynamic bass function. Deactivate dynamic bass. say this system sounds really really good. So there it is, the Arillic A30 Plus wireless streaming amplifier. I like it. Such a small device, but there are so many different things that this can do. And it got me interested in the whole wide field of streaming music through a home network. There is really only one thing that I have to criticize, and that is the power brick. This is quite noisy. It's whining, it's buzzing, it's just not the same high quality as the amplifier. I'd like to thank Arillic for sending their wireless streaming amplifier, and I'd like to thank you for watching this video.